Internet Historian 2.0. Oh, there's a 2042 one? Oh, I have to watch that. That game owns. And I want to know a little bit more. Battle failed 20... This video... Battle failed 2042. This is his best video? Yeah. Bullets, explosions, chemicals, worse. But every day, the weaponry that supplements these wars only gets better. Mm. Tens of billions of dollars, thousands of hours of manpower, all spent on technology based on one thing, complete and utter annihilation of the other side. Jesus Contraptions Christ. too sick to even ponder. And over the decades, this new technology has changed warfare immeasurably. And it's only getting more advanced. <laughs> Robot dogs, sentry guns, surveillance drones, and more are either already being used or are in early stages of testing. And as a result, the landscape of war is changing forever. And with 20 years of simulating modern combat with complete immersion, DICE sought to give us a glimpse into this future with their next game. And in 2021, with their most up-to-date tech, gargantuan budget, and four whole dev teams at their disposal, they were set to launch the biggest and best Battlefield game of all time. Battlefield 2042. Dude, let me just say something before we start this 2042 video. They asked and paid for maybe 60 to 100 content creators for their help. Okay? They did consulting with about you know, a lot of us, it started with like 60 of us or something. And then it narrowed down to 40 and then 20 and then 10 or whatever it was. Did it a few times. They didn't listen to a f thing we said. Not an, not, not one thing. Not one thing we said. Not a single one. Not one. Why the f did they pay us? I mean, I got paid. But I couldn't believe it. Like, we know what we're talking about. We play games for a f***ing living. We don't stop. We just play, 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 play. We have you guys in chat who just echo all of the shit that's bad. We know everything. We are the masterminds. Listen to us. I will say they recovered this game. It was bad. They didn't listen. But they did recover it. Years later, it's actually not a bad game if you play right now. It kind of owns. I'll be honest. This game now kind of owns. November 20th, 2018. Battlefield 5 has just fully launched, and it's looking a bit rough. <sighs> Critic scores are looking good, but user reviews? Eh, not so much. This game is totally not ready for release. Fake history. No atmosphere. Zero out of ten. Very slot history. Fake history. Also, history. the marketing? Not the best. Turns out that insulting your fans and telling them not to buy your game isn't too productive here. Damn. The trailer and cosmetics of the game also proved to be controversial. And the launch came packaged with a horde of glitches, bad anti-cheat, unbalanced weapons, and massive portions of the game delayed. Overall, not great. It had also been two consecutive World War Battlefield games, and the charm was starting to wear off. Fans long- You know what's weird? I actually kind of like Battlefield 5. I don't know why someone typed fake history like that matters, but I actually kind of f***ed with Battlefield 5. I thought it was good. Surprisingly. I liked it better than 1 for the days of high-rise skyscrapers, map-changing events, jets, helis, and so on. Now, when it comes to military shooters, DICE isn't just anyone. They're EA's golden boy. EA sees Battlefield 5's sales are, well, disappointing. So they decide it's time for a change, and they know just what players want. It's back to the future, kids. And this is gonna be a big one. And with that, pre-production of the next Battlefield begins. Naturally, we don't hear much about Battlefield for a while. However, throughout 2021, leaks start to drip, and we get our first taste. Rumours of a return to modern warfare, a soft reboot of the franchise, 
a game heavily inspired by Battlefield 3. 128 players on PC and next gen. Wow. Then came the horribly grainy, seizure inducing leaked trailer footage. Quality's not great, but we're parched. <laughs> then came another, and another. They're eventually stitched into one slightly coherent trailer, and oh yeah. Now this looked like Battlefield. But finally, on June the 9th, 2021, the next Battlefield is officially revealed. And it looks amazing. Also, we were now practically baking it did look good. information. First, the bad news. The squad system the trailer, is being anyway, into the trailer was, the trailer system. was sick. The trailer was Basically, sick. It was a really the system sounds more It was akin. a really good trailer, to be honest. It was a banger. Into a hero shooter than a classic battlefield game. This is controversial, but we'll have to see how it plays out. And then there's no campaign. Not a massive loss, to be honest. But True. that means more resources for multiplayer. Also, a ton of leaks are confirmed. 128 players, massive scale warfare, modern combat, and turns out EA is throwing four whole studios at it. They also say that it's way ahead of schedule. Also, there would be three whole game sections. All Out Warfare, the traditional battlefield experience, including Conquest and Rush, Hazard Zone, DICE's second take on a battle royale, partly inspired by Tarkov, and Portal, a game mode that includes maps, weapons, and soldiers from classic battlefield games. Things were sounding great. And Battlefield 2042 was coming out in just four months, in October 2021. But then it's delayed by a month. But don't worry, everyone will have a chance to jump into the free beta in just a few weeks' time. A one month delay? That's like not enough, ever. It's Friday, October 6th, and at 12 a.m. PDT, the beta goes online, and the first few players log on. The beta was good! Chaos. Awful player netcode results in rubber banding and abysmal hit registration. The balancing is dreadful. Okay, the beta was good when it worked. This is not the experience that everyone got. When it worked, it was actually not bad. Full. Not, maybe I didn't play day one, but it wasn't this bad when I played. The beta was actually pretty good. Bugs everywhere. And the game just generally feels off. Also, uh, where was the voice chat? A scoreboard? Anyone? What the hell is even that? This was looking real bad. Redditors take to the streets within hours. But DICE has an announcement. Gentlemen, relax. The build for the beta is a few months old, they tell us. The current build at DICE is in a lot better. Dude, the current... <clears throat> okay. So maybe I'm just talking from a gameplay perspective, but the build in the beta was better than the build in launch. Like, they definitely were two different builds, for sure. You always have two different builds, right? The beta build is just so old, always. Which is weird, right? Isn't that weird how that works? How you have a beta branch, but it's still such an old version of your game to the point where you think, why don't we have the newer version as a beta? But anyway, that's always how it works. You're just constantly adding more on top of your current build, and then the beta is like a stable branch that you're able to play. Anyway, the beta... Gameplay was much better than the launch gameplay. ...to shape, and a ton of issues have been fixed. There's nothing to worry about. Redditors rejoice immediately. Thank God. The game was going to be fine. Phew. That was a close one. And now the wait for release begins. <laughs> Midnight, 12th of November. 2021. We'd waited months for release, and today was the day. Alright boys, it's go time. Players who'd forked out $100 to play the game a week before release boot up the game and jump in. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm just, I'm wondering if they're going to do the, the <laughs> micro -treads. I remember in the consulting they asked us what we think about skins. <laughs> And the skins they showed us were like the Santa Claus skins. And every single one of us were like, 
they were like, so what do you think? And we were just like, no, we don't want Santa Claus running around in a Battlefield game. We were literally, every single person said no. Like, while the skin looked fine, whatever, the art, it doesn't make any sense. We said no. We should, that's not a good idea. Fast forward some months. There's f***ing Santa Claus running around. What the hell? All good. What the fuck is this piece of shit? <laughs> Yo, that's sick! What the f was that? Was that tech? Can't even turn left or right. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> I can't even turn left. Oh, yes, or... I actually think I encountered that bug once where you're just fucking locked. Treated with an experience. Uh, so soul crushing. I do remember that, actually. Fundamentally broken. I didn't experience this many bugs where shit was going through the world. Of, of course, there was a few, but not. I don't think I experienced all of like the weird shit. The game is review bombed mere hours after it launches. Only a handful of things from the beta had actually been fixed. In fact, for some people, even more seemed broken. Yeah, Enjoyed the horrible performance of the beta. Beta was... How about more crashes? Beta was better. Even worse sure. netcode. Blurrier graphics? Coming right up. Performance is awful on PC. And flickering and pop-ins plagues console. Oh my god! What's wrong with your face? Some fans <laughs> are holding out for a comprehensive day one patch that would fix most of these issues when the game launched for everyone. But turns out, that had already gone up. Here's what it fixed. But when the game actually works, you can jump into the fleshed out and richly developed world of Battlefield 2042. The world is dark and gritty. The climate has gotten so bad that natural disasters are almost ubiquitous, causing states to fail everywhere. Millions are starving, left without a country, and fighting a constant resource war worldwide causing Germany's bankruptcy and... Wait, hold on. There's no campaign, so literally none of this matters at all. Also, if the world is so awful, why are the soldiers like this? What a time to be alive! Well, well, well. That was fun. I am not overconfident. I'm just better than everyone else. What the hell was that? Bullet spread and hit registration is <laughs> still abominable. And people are unloading full mags of their weapons at point-blank range, and not landing a single hit. There are many such cases. The balancing? Well, that's still awful too. That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. The weapons were so fucked on launch. They were so bad. Oh my god. There was... Dude. There was so much bloom on every single fucking weapon that you had to use the SMG because it didn't have bloom for some reason, but every other gun did. I mean, it had some bloom, but it was like tight. What the fuck was that about? PP-29 is almost the only viable automatic weapon, as it's the only one that can sort of land a shot. So naturally, half of the lobby is running around with it. Hovercrafts are also incredibly overpowered, being that they're gunned, they spawn almost indefinitely, and there's 10 of them headed directly towards your team at all times. They can also climb buildings and literally fly. Then there's the squad system, essentially the core pillar of a battlefield game. This time round, it's not looking too hot. First off, it's a game with 128 players. Your squad is limited to four, not a great start. Then, unless you're with friends, you're forced into a squad of randomers, and you can't pick which squad to move to, or create your own. A friends come online halfway through your game? Unlucky. It's time to back out to the main menu, invite them, and search for a new one. Also, there are no squad points, no chat, no spawn preview, no emotes, 
that you can't see what equipment your squad is carrying, essentially rendering your squad absolutely useless. Also, the addition of specialists means classes are now a thing of the past, making team play even more redundant. The specialist. Okay, specialists were just classes. People, I don't, this wasn't a big deal. This wasn't a big, this was just, it was just an extra thing because they already fucked up so many things to like get more mad at them. It literally, these, these individuals were, they were already classes. And then what they did, guess what? When they made classes, they just separated each character into the class that it was already in. It just didn't visually show up as assault class, medic, recon, but they were, cla they were classes system also means that players on both teams look exactly the same. Didn't see that tiny friendly dot above your teammate's head? Unlucky son. Maps in 2042 are abhorrently underdesigned, and around 70% of the lobby are concentrated on a couple of flags, <laughs> leaving about four players on any other objective at any given time. This is in a game of 128 people. The map size also results in running extremely long distances. This map fucking sucks. The rework on that map's pretty good though. Only to get obliterated by snipers or helis. The actual graphics of the maps are in some cases worse than Battlefield 5. The destruction? Not great. Some buildings' walls are still destroyable, but you can't take down the actual buildings. Something you could do more than a decade ago in Bad Company 2. That's a lot of damage! There are still destructive events, but needless to say, they fall a bit short of the mark. God, this game fucking sucked. This game was overrated as fuck. The content? Uh, where, where is it? This game has a total of 22 weapons. Battlefield 4 had 83. Battlefield 4 also had three times the gadgets, three more maps, and a ton more customization for aircraft. And is that is that comparing to the launch of the two? That's kind of crazy. Helicopters. Then there's fewer game modes at launch, no stat page, no server browser, dog tags are gone, and so on. The oh, movement. Dice day. said pre-launch that they were building on what they did with Battlefield 5. Let's take a look at that. Crouch sprinting, not in the game. Rolling. Gone. Lying on your back while prone. Absent. Oh, that shit is so fucking cool. Grabbing a ledge while falling. Not in the game. Literally just leaning left and right like every game post 2012. Nope. You also can't dive under the water like you could in every battlefield since 4. However, if you stab the water enough times, you can glitch yourself under it. The UI is so dreadful that you can't even tell if your settings the toggled on or off. The melee, well, it speaks for itself. Oh, fuck. That's so good. Assassinations are in the game, but they're lazily done. The man you're about to kill is prone. Why don't you help him up, kick him back down again, then stab him in the chest? <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Dice added AI bots to the game to pad out lobbies and make sure they're never dead. One issue, they're absolutely moronic. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm kind of retarded. And lastly, there's still no stat page, voice chat, or even a scoreboard. And all of that was just the actual game design. Then there were the bugs. Are those my footsteps on dry concrete? Why is my gun firing blanks? Did you just die with so much as a toe touching a wall or rock? Sorry pal, nothing I can do. You just parachute down from the sky? Well. There's a chance that it stays deployed after you land, meaning there's now a parachute above you at all times, completely giving away your position. Vehicle physics are slightly broken. Helicopter hot landings are hot. Every time you jump in a tank gun, it's so jittery you might as well be sat directly on top of the engine. <laughs> By the way, you can actually shoot yourself with that gun while getting inside. <laughs> nice. Then there's the random people uh, frozen on the map. No hit detection on buildings, flying across the map using a ladder. That was me! And so Dude, I remember that clip. I remember that clip, bro. No hit. I was... This is me. Oh, yeah, you guys can't see me. 
This was fucking me. I was flying a jet. <laughs> I was flying a jet into every single building and it didn't do anything. It just was bouncing. On building. It was just over. I literally that was that wasn't a one off, by the way. That wasn't just one building I hit. I hit every single building back to back to back, and I'm just bouncing. I'm just bouncing around. It was so fucking funny. Things, flying across the map using a ladder, and so on. But hey, the main game's not great. What? And Hazard Zone is pretty forgettable. But at least Portal Mode is decent. Wait, what's that? The ability to earn XP from it has been removed because of people boosting. Obvious. Who cares about that? That was enough 2042 for one day. I don't know why anyone cares about that. That's like... Like, who cares? But whatever. No one and no one did. Yeah, I mean, that's just an extra, People extra little are thing to be upset what about, I guess. the hell, Dice? Where was the stat page? A voice chat? A scoreboard? Legacy features. Dice response. Their scientists and engineers had been strapped for time and couldn't get them working for launch. But they promised these intricate and time-consuming features would eventually be implemented. But forget about that. In terms of basic features, the game seemed to have regressed more than a decade. Even the graphics in some cases. Something was clearly disastrously wrong. And naturally, the inevitable happens. What was a strong start with over 100k players on Steam soon starts to dwindle. Within a single month, the game falls below Battlefield 5's player numbers. No. Player numbers get so bad that cheaters literally discontinue selling their own cheats because of it. <laughs> Damage control mode was now on. <laughs> Dice devs gather around. That's fucked. What do players want? What do they need? What about skins? Steve, draft us up a Santa Claus outfit. Oh no, dude. Looks amazing. This is Jeff, what they showed us. us up a That's what they showed us. They said, what do you guys think about this? And we said, fuck no. And this is what we got. That looks amazing. Jeff, whip us up a medieval knight, would you? Day of the dead man. Baz, get on it. What about a clown skin? A clown. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, These skins end up getting leaked ahead of their launch. Uh, and the backlash is so bad. Dice is forced to drop them. Wait. A series of- Oh, they didn't come out? Oh. Wait. Let's go! We did it! Dice tweet. No, they, they still did in the end. Oh. It's also stoked some fires. First, a Dice employee tweets about fans' brutal expectations. A stat page, voice chat, basic squad mechanics, a mid-game scoreboard. Brutal indeed. A pre-launch tweet where a DICE employee says that the game was in a solid state and that it wasn't his first rodeo also gains notoriety. So in a shocking twist, the developers of a released AAA game rush to actually finish their game. <laughs> November 24th, patch 2 is released. This addresses the crazy bullet spread on most weapons, as well as addressing some other balancing issues. That was a good patch. That was not bad. 2nd of December, not bad. patch was good 3 one. is released. This brings UI improvements and more balancing changes. Decent. Also, the scoreboard was supposed to release in this update, but that's been delayed. Also, season one of the game is delayed till summer, a full six months after launch, as DICE are so busy actually finishing the game. <laughs> March 8th, 2022. Patch 3.3 is released. After months of work, DICE's finest engineers and top talent working around the clock Billions in R&D, and unprecedented resource allocation, DICE had cracked it. And at the UN General <laughs> Assembly, they showcase an actual, functioning scoreboard. <laughs> My god. Nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> April 18th, patch 4. It had taken five months of work post-launch, but now DICE's quantum mechanical scientists are on a roll. First the scoreboard. Now they'd cracked something arguably more impressive. Multiplayer voice chat. Which one of you motherfuckers called my mom gay? 
Everybody type in the chat, Alex is a stupid- Dice goes on to win multiple government communications huh. contracts, huh. and everyone on the team is nominated for Nobel Prizes, respectively. Oh. And after this patch, those physics-defying hovercrafts should no longer be flying through the stratosphere. Despite these cutting-edge advancements- I thought that shit was hilarious. They should have kept that. The game. Over 100,000 have actually signed a petition to get it refunded. But on June the 9th, Season 1 is finally released. Version 1.0. Finally, they still the guys considered a full game. Hell yeah. Seven months after launch, and Season 1 on the map, a specialist, two guns, and two helicopters. Compare this to Battlefield 1's first DLC that included four maps, two operations, a new mode, six new weapons, two tanks, and a new class. Hmm. Despite the lack of content, this does revive the player base somewhat. Season 1 also includes a ton of patches, one of which fixes the bug where landing your helicopter at the pace of a falling feather would result in instantaneous explosion. <laughs> Plans to rework maps and classes are also underway. So what went wrong? Well, let's dive in. A month after the game's launch, prominent leaker Tom Henderson releases a video explaining that should be known sources, as a leaker. The inside scoop. Of what the fuck is that? It's interesting. According to him, due to EA's restrictions on creative freedom, a ton of Dice's veteran developers leave the studio to form their own after Battlefield 5's release. This is also when pre-production for 2042 is just getting going. EA looks around. They see a market filled with battle royales and hero shooters, all just bursting at the seams with money. They want in, and they think Battlefield would be perfect for it. Their game plan is simple. Listen lads, see all that popular stuff out there? Do that. And DICE gets to work. Do that. In February 2019, Respawn's Apex Legends releases and basically starts printing EA money straight out the game. <laughs> EA likes. So DICE takes a bit of inspiration. And in late 2019, a battle royale setting and the concept of specialists are born. Now there are a few problems surfacing. The first up being the game's engine, Frostbite. Battlefield 5 was developed in just two years, meaning DICE didn't have the time to update the game's engine to the newest version. This time round, however, their game had three years in the oven. So DICE has plenty of time to upgrade. Now, it was DICE's devs who'd actually created Frostbite in the first place. So this would be a breeze. Wait, hold on. Haven't all those devs just left? Oh god. So barely anyone left at DICE knows how to actually use the engine. And naturally, 2042's Frostbite update ends up taking a while. A long while. In fact, upgrading the engine alone takes over half of the game's development time. What was supposed to take 6 months, has now taken 18. Fast forward to March 2020, and everyone's working from home now. This is not good. A process that takes a few minutes in office could now take hours. Also, EA has decided to backtrack, and is now saying they want 2042 back to a more classic Battlefield formula. DICE now has to spend a ton of time redesigning the game and the original concept of 2042 is tacked on as a new game mode. Hazard Zone August 2020 The concepts and ideas are finalised, and the actual game development begins. This leaves DICE around one year and three months of actual development time. This is very short for a AAA game of this scale, and that's compounded by the fact everyone's working from home. Also, new devs are still joining. In fact, at this point, almost 90% of DICE's designers had joined after Battlefield 1. 60% during 2042. DICE is now a completely different studio. I don't even know who you are. In February 2021, EA's CEO comes out to the world. The Battlefield team is doing an incredible job. The game is way ahead of internal milestones. Isn't that right? Um... Sure. A month later, <laughs> DICE realises they're definitely not going to hit internal milestones. Frostbite engineers are then forced to drop their projects and jump on board. Time goes by, and progress on the game is made. And by August, 
the game is being beta tested internally. It's not long before the consensus is clear. This game is hot dog shit. The only option here is clearly another delay. This game could use at least another year in the oven. No, says EA. No more delays. No more ovens. <laughs> the game is launching this year. DICE has no choice. And on the 12th of November 2021, the game releases. No Battlefield 2042 happen. today is in a much more solid state, and DICE has even recently released their first reworked map. Here's how that's going. However, at this point, few people are still playing the game. 2042's Steam numbers stoop down to sub 5,000, and the game slips further into irrelevance. Claims begin to circulate that EA is now in abandoned ship mode, and that 2042 devs are now down to a skeleton crew. And so, another one of EA's once talented developers has been squeezed dry, its talents harvested, and its franchise forever tainted. God, Battlefront 2. That game owned. If they didn't do what they did with their pay-to-win shit, that game could have been... Fuck. I mean, they ca they continued to develop it. They stopped development like a few years ago, I think. But, fuck. That game is so good. Battlefront 2 is so good. 